Good morning, God bless you. It's Kai Vile coming at you with another video. Gotta remember the pinky. So, today's video is exciting. It's about the fire of God, holy fire, as it says in the scriptures that God is an all-consuming fire. And originally when he even met Moses at the burning bush, the bush was on fire, but it wasn't consumed. And another time, God came to visit Moses and his people that he delivered from Egypt. And he came down on the mountain, and the mountain was on fire, which is why the people were just so afraid, because they couldn't stand how awesome um, and awestruck they were that this mountain was on fire. It wasn't completely consumed, but God is an all-consuming fire. So, God is full of fire. And this video is about the holy fire and about Jesus Jesus is fire. So going to Luke chapter 3, John the Baptist actually talked about Jesus and his baptisms. But John made it clear by telling them, There is one coming who is mightier than I. He is supreme. In fact, I'm not worthy of even being his slave. I can only baptize you in this river, but he will baptize you into the spirit of holiness and to his raging fire. So there's a, there's a baptism of the Holy Spirit, and there's a baptism of fire. And yet, we think that there's only one baptism, which is the baptism of water. But there are several baptisms, and Jesus baptizes in the Holy Spirit and in holy fire. In the Passion Translation, it, it's described as a raging fire. So John actually um, describes Jesus in this way. He has in his hands a winnowing fork to clean up his threshing floor. So at the footnote, that winnowing, winnowing fork is a small pitchfork um, used to separate the chaff from the grain. So what's not useful for the fire is separated from the grain. And so there's a separation process in the baptism of fire in Jesus Christ. The, the, he will separate the wheat from the chaff. The wheat he will gather into his barn, but he will burn the chaff in a fire that no one can ever put out. So that even goes beyond, and there's a lot of meaning into that. I'm going to continue, but there's a separation process of the holy fire that comes from God. God separates his people from the rest of the world. And that's also the baptism of fire. Coming to know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and following him, you encounter his fire. And that fire kind of burns. It burns inside and there's a there's a holy passionate fire that comes in and makes you alive. It makes you fall in love with God. It makes you receive the gift of eternal life and you receive it by fire. And so that fire following Jesus should get you excited. A lot of people when they're born again and they come to believe in Jesus because they realize that the world is messed up. Jesus is good. He, he has a um, he has salvation in him. And so we experience him and we get set on fire. But as we go about the world, disappointments, discouragement, um, all sorts of things that upset us and hurt us, and it gets us lukewarm. But in order for us to stay in the fire, we need to continue fanning that flame. So the fire is good. There's something, too, that burns in us, that um, burns and refines us. The Bible, there's so many scriptures that talks about how God tests us in fire our faith is tested by fire and then the gold is revealed the gold in us is revealed true life is revealed our character becomes refined by the fire of god in addition to that the bible also describes the angels as messengers of flames of fire angels are full of fire because they come from the throne room of god and they come to serve on this earth when, you know, wherever their assignments are for our lives, they are full of fire. And, and sometimes you might spiritually feel on fire when you experience God. Because you may have an angel right next to you that's full of fire because they are flames of fire. So anyways, um, Jesus actually talks more about the fire. In Luke chapter 12, verse 49, Jesus brings fire to the earth. Jesus says, I have come to set the earth on fire. And now, and how I long for every heart to be already ablaze with this fiery passion for God. But first, I must be immersed into the baptism of God's judgment 
So Jesus actually show, shows another uh, baptism. There's a baptism of judgment. And Jesus himself experienced that baptism. And I am consumed with passion as I await its fulfillment. What church is talking about this stuff? What church and what preachers are talking about the fire of God? There are. They are out there, but very few. Jesus says, don't think for a moment that I came to grant peace and harmony to everyone. Okay, so the scriptures say that Jesus is the Prince of Peace. And the first things that Jesus said to his disciples when he appeared to them after his resurrection was, Peace be to you. So Jesus is a peace giver. Jesus also says that you will always have trouble in this world, but take heart, I have overcome the world. I give you peace that the world cannot give you. But Jesus says, I don't grant peace to everyone. Okay? You only get his peace when you receive him and when you receive his fire. He says, no, for my coming will change everything and create hostility among you. What church has talked about this? What preaching and teaching talks about this? Jesus actually came to bring separation. Jesus um, and God, God, the whole Trinity, actually has a way of taking people and setting apart them wholly for himself. And so there is a separation process where you experience the fire of God and you are set apart from the world. And that's why there's always a remnant, because the world rejects God. And so they don't receive God's peace. And yet they long for peace. They want peace, but they reject the peace giver. But Jesus says, I, I actually create hostility among you because there's division. So anyways, Jesus says, from now on, even family members will be divided over me and will choose sides against one another. Fathers will be split against sons and sons against fathers. Mothers will be against daughters and daughters against mothers. Mothers-in-law will be against brides and brides against mothers-in-law all because of me. Jesus creates a separation and division amongst people. But Jesus sets us for the kingdom of God. So when you believe and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're born again. You follow Jesus and now there's a separation from the rest of the world. You're called to be different. In fact, the Bible calls us aliens. Paul, the apostle, he called us aliens because he saw from the other realm, from heaven, the revelation that we are actually the aliens because our home belongs in the eternal home. We belong to God. We're the aliens on this earth. I'm an alien to this earth, but I have a dual citizenship. I have rightful, um, rightful citizenship as a person on this earth. But my other citizenship is in heaven. And that's my real citizenship because that's eternal. This right here is just is temporary on earth. But I have an eternal citizenship. So Jesus wants us to be on fire because that's where we, we're going to really produce fruit. And that's where our character is going to be refined. And there's a discipline about God's fire too. There's a testing of our faith, a genuine faith, so that the gold is revealed in us. So God is all about character and refining us and making us more like him. But we have to accept and follow him and there's a discipline about it. Okay, there's, there, there's, other, there's next level relationship with God. And if you want the fire of God to spread, you need to be full of fire. You need to get into the secret place. You need to spend personal time with the Lord. You need to have those holy convictions, those righteous convictions, um, repentance, and to turn to God and be full of his fire so that we can then extend the love of God and the fire of God and actually do what God wants us to do so that his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So this morning I felt the um, Lord just lead me to get into my journal, my personal journal, and read some uh, revelations and what I've written um, in recent past because I believe it's full of fire. <laughs> so... Revel, uh, revelation from August 19, 2020. The Lord only has good plans. God plans for our lives. We need to be obedient to follow his ways and he will prosper us. Seen in Matthew 23, Jesus shows that he wanted to take Israel under his wings like, like a hen and her chickens. But he says you would not have it. So Israel rejected Jesus or a whole, a whole lot of people. It's a decision to follow and heed the message of the Lord by his prophets and hearing his voice personally, staying on track because he has plans individually for you individually as a person and collectively. So you're also a part of the collective uh, will that God has for his plans on earth. With him, you can't go wrong. 
He is always right. God is always right. And he also does not want lukewarm. God does not want lukewarm. Jesus even said it in the book of Revelation that he says, because I wish that you would be either hot or cold, but because you are lukewarm, I spit you out of my mouth. So as in, there are going to be people who think that they're Christian and think people who think that they're Jews and they belong to God. And yet the, the master, Jesus, is going to spit people out of his mouth because of lukewarmness. Jesus is full of fire and he wants us to be on fire. So um, I'll even read this in August 22nd. Two days after that previous one, I, this is what I wrote. I noticed there's a difference in people. By the knowledge of Jesus Christ, acknowledging that he came and died for sinners while we were still sinners, gives us an awe and wonder of God's faithful and unfailing love for the children of mankind. Knowing Jesus, acknowledging what God has done is the born again experience, an experience that is transformative. Your whole being changes by the grace of God. I believe in the awe and wonder of the revelation of Jesus Christ, a deep, intimate experience and in the love of God to love God more intensely and intimately. And I quote to someone, she said, God kind of love reproduced throughout the world. We need the God kind of love, not just like human frailty love. We need the God kind of love. And there, that is a deep love. And it causes us to do things that are beyond what a natural person can do on their own. But well, this is what I also said, too. In September of, uh, 2nd, 2020, I wrote this. It is impossible to go wrong with God. In him, there is no corruption, no evil, no wrong, no deception, no poverty, no debt. If there's anything that is not of this, oh, if there's poverty, if there's debt, if there's corruption, if there's deception, if there's evil, if there's wrongdoing, that is not of God. But you can clearly see that on the news and mainstream media because the media likes to highlight what Satan's works. Where is God's works? We want to highlight that. It is happening, but you have to open your eyes to him. Only life. The words of Jesus and the fruit of the spirit is life. The word of life. God in God is only life and he enforces blessings. He does not enforce the curse of this world. That is the God of this world, which is Satan. Satan, Jesus said, Satan is the God of this world. So we have to be redeemed and set apart wholly for him and be set on fire because Jesus said that he came to set a fire on this earth and that fire needs to be spread. We need to stay in the spirit to live by the spirit of God, with the word of God, the fire of God, continually fanning the flame, wage war with the words of prophecy, Declare truth over lies and pulling down strongholds in anything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. We lift up the name of Jesus Christ. Behold, all things are made new. You are a new creation. 2 Corinthians 5.17 We need discipline, unity, love, life, truth, and joy. That's all from God. So I hope this message was full of fire. I feel a little of the fire. Um, God is an all-consuming fire, and he wants to put you on fire. And with when you're in the fire, you have to enter in, and that fire starts spreading. You may not even see it, but sometimes spiritually, you can just enter a room, and the fire of God is with you, and that fire comes into the room because you're in the room, and because God is with you if you're a follower of Jesus Christ. So, I hope this message co co encourages you. I hope it, uh, it sets you ablaze with the fire of God. God bless you, and I will see you next time. Peace.